Hey there guys, Deoxy360 and I'll be giving you a rundown on how to hack the Mini Super Nintendo. Now it's quite easy with the program Hack She that you can see on the corner of my window right there. Uh, what you're going to need to do first is download that and I'll put down a link in the description of where you can download that and they'll probably have a step by step of how to use the program as well but if you don't get that I'll be here too to guide you on how to hack your Mini Super Nintendo. Now first up we're going to open up Hack She. Well, open it up on OBS, so it's not going to do anything. First, we're going to open up Hatchy, and as you can see, I've got all these games in there. Now, it says original games, and then it's got Batman Returns, Chrono Trigger, Doom, a Dragon Ball Z game, Earthworm Jam, Goof Trip, you get the idea. I've got a ton of games on there, well, not a ton, I've added like 18 more, something like that, and basically, you've got the original games as well, but when you open it up, you're going to see what console you have, Mini Super Nintendo, Mini SNES, Mini Super Famicom, and say Mini Super Nintendo. And that's the one you're going to want to click on. Now, basically, to get the ROMs on there, you're going to have to go out and download the ROMs yourself. I'm not going to blurt out where to find the ROMs. I'll probably put a link down in the description. Or you can just Google Super Nintendo ROMs, and that will help you find them. Now, to keep the ROMs organized, you're going to want them to have them in a file. I, I named them SNES ROMs, and they're all unzipped, and you're going to leave them unzipped. Because basically, you can add them into the Hatchy file, leaving them unzipped. So next up, I'm going to add some new games that I downloaded, and that was... Ch -ch -ch, what was those games? That was Spider-Man Separa Separation Anxiety, uh, ch -ch -ch, and Super Star Wars. And those are the two new games that I added there. Now, if you want the artwork on there, you can go Google Images, get the artwork for it, and let's see, Spider-Man Separation, Spider Venom Spider-Man Separation Anxiety. Get the artwork for that. And don't got the artwork for that. Now we've added those two games, and what's really interesting is going to tell you if they're two-player or not. But enough of that. Let's go synchronize games with SNES slash SNES Mini. Now it's going to say these prompts first, but your prompts are probably going to be different now. I'm going to put those prompts up there, and what those prompts are going to do, you're basically going to have to hold down the reset button for a few seconds, then turn on the mini SNES, and basically you're going to make sure once you turn it on, you let go of it after a few seconds, and then you basically leave the mini SNES on, and then you go install the driver. So that's basically all you need to do. It's pretty simple. If you're confused, there's probably other tutorials better than mine. So basically what we're going to do is hit... Well, first I've got to turn mine on. So mine is plugged in via USB cable. So that's one thing I should have mentioned. You're going to have to have the USB cable that came with it that you install into your drivers. So that's a very important thing. So let's hit turn on with my mini SNES. And hit install drivers. And of course this is going to come up and I'm going to say yes. And basically it's building the structure format as you can see. And basically it's processing the original games because if you want to keep the original games on there you can. You're going to have a fair bit of Super Nintendo games on there because you can have up to 300 megabytes of space. And when you have the original games on there, if you don't have any save states on there, it's roughly only 30 to 80 megabytes of space. So you can have a fair bit of games on there if you want to. So that's... And I want to do that again because I didn't have the Spider-Man and thing on there, so we'll do that again. Hit synchronize, hit install drive. Hit yes. And basically you're going to see it again. But if you're doing this for the first time, I will have instructions on what you need to do for this. So basically this is waiting on device building folder structure. Now what it's doing for building folder structure, when you plug it into your TV, it's going to have a file where it's going to have your new game separate from the original games, which is pretty cool, I want to say that. Now the best thing to do is to do a test run of all the games. I think the only one that didn't run for me was basically uh, Goof Troop. It didn't brick my console, it just made me restart my console by pressing the reset button or throwing me back to the menu, so nothing too detailed or nothing too 
bad. Now, you can run into the problem of bricking your console. I managed to do my first try without any problems. I was sweating a little bit, thinking I would break. I would brick my mini Super Nintendo, but all went well, and I didn't manage to brick my Super Nintendo, so it's pretty easy. Have step by steps in the comment section down below and in the description since people don't read the description these days. So, if you want to find out how to hack your mini Super Nintendo, I will tell you. But if you have any problems, please tell me down in the comment section down below or just Google as your friend because nothing that you can't solve, Google can solve for you with forums and message boards. So that's a good sign. But I'm Deoxy360, thank you so much for watching. If this video helped you out, give it a thumbs up and I'll see you guys later and peace out.